Good afternoon. It's the 4th of April, 1998, and we're privileged today to speak with one of our more mature senior citizens, Mrs. Mayberg Altro, who probably is the present person most knowledgeable about the town of Newstead in the old days. The following will be some of our questions and her answers and her comments. There, you don't have to lean into this. You just talk in your normal voice. One of my questions, the one I've been worrying about, is where was Newstead Center? <laughs> you ever remember? I've never heard of it. I've was seen it? it on the maps, but uh, or not on the maps, rather. But I saw it in some writing somewhere. Newstead Center. Somebody lived at Newstead Center. Never I've never it. heard of it. Okay. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> There was at Shore Road in Crittenden a Reformed church at one time. Yeah. What do you remember about that, May? My, I don't remember the church, but my mother often talked of it. She said that was the church they had before they had the Lutheran church up here. Oh, it preceded the Lutheran yeah. church. Oh, because mm. I know where the church is now. It's over on Wilbur Steiner's barn. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> where it is. I've taken pictures of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if it was a German church or Dutch or what? German. German. I guess. It was called Reformed and somebody... It was sort of a... Uh, it wasn't a really a church, I guess. Yeah. You know, they just had services the in meeting there, place. whoever they could get there. I don't think they ever had a minister there. Oh. Uh, that was, uh, you know, hired yeah. for there. I don't think so. Because I think that uh, at about that time, uh, they got together. There was 12 families that got together, and uh, mm -hmm. 12 men each kicked in $100. Yeah. And that made the Lutheran Church $1,200. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. What, what would that do now? It would well, build hardly a chicken pay the fuel bill for a month, no. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, that's... A, what do you remember about... Did you go to country schools here when you were Oh, little? yes. I went up here by Swarm's store. Oh. Uh, that's where I got all my education. I never had uh, a chance to go to Akron to school because there was no bus and no yeah. way of going. Right. That school, Margaret Blackmore was a teacher there at one time. Yes, she was the last one, I think. As a matter of fact, your grandson went to school there when he was a little kid, Dale. Yeah, yeah Dale went there. Yeah, I read that in a piece in my file on country schools. <laughs> well, all right. I got a picture of it someplace. Of Probably the seal is hunting for it. She just left. <laughs> well, I, I don't know what she had. It was quite a bunch of kids, probably 25 or so. Yeah. May, what can you tell me about your family history? Your parents and grandparents or whoever came to this country first? Yeah. What can you I, remember? I don't know the dates. They never had good dates oh. I mean, when they come. Yeah. But uh, my uh, father and mother were both born in this country and uh, were married here. Yeah. But... Uh, the grandparents were, uh, they were married here too, I think, because Grandma Bird came from Baden, didn't she? <laughs> well, I had it <coughs> down in the, and grandfather. You on the from, Bergs now or the Bookleys? No, uh, uh, the Bookleys was from Wurttemberg, and, and uh, uh, Grandma came from Baden. Grandma Bird came from Baden. Oh, yeah, okay. And uh, uh, she was a young girl, and she had an unfortunate time coming here from Germany. I believe she came alone. She was supposed to have met a brother in New York, but she didn't find him. He didn't show oh. up for it. She mm -hmm. didn't get him, and he disappointed her. And... Uh, she never, I never did hear 
when they, whether they found him or whether he found them. But uh, Grandma came, and it's an inter interesting. Uh, Aunt Sarah told me so many times about it. Yeah. And she said she got to New York, and she had a big uh, wooden chest. And she had to have somebody always carry that for her. Mm -hmm. And in that, she had a, a, a spinning wheel. She had the spinning, brought her a spinning wheel. And she, mm -hmm. Lucille's got it out of the porch. Oh. And um, it was all taken in pieces. Mm -hmm. and, and she said that they put her on the milk train. They called the first train in the morning the milk train, but she said that it it went through the country, and they thought that that was the best for her. Uh, somebody engineered her getting onto the milk train and coming to town line. And uh, she came up on the uh, Erie, I suppose. And uh, when she got to town line, they set her off at a milk station. And she sat down on the trunk that she had and waited for, I guess, somebody to come along. My and God. somebody did come along. She knew a family in town line by the name of Strickler. And she was quite uh, interested in getting to their place. And this man loaded her up on a milk wagon. And uh, he took her where she wanted to go, or I don't know whether she went there, but she was she was interested in getting work. She mm. wanted to work for sure. somebody so that mm. she would be more self-supporting and everything. And uh, but I don't know whether he took her to uh, Strickler's or not. But uh, whether she ever got there, I don't. Uh, it, just remember uh, of them telling and making that very plain but anyway wherever it was she worked she worked for uh, uh, some people on uh, Genesee Road and uh, my grandfather Berg, he worked there too and eventually they got married what was her maiden name Steinbrenner oh she was a Steinbrenner yeah I knew a George Steinbrenner. Yeah. Yeah. George Steinbrenner. Yeah, he was in Williamsville. Did you know he was my father's George cousin. Is, huh? Joanne Cummings is the sister yeah, of she was young a George Steinbrenner. Steinbrenner. But then her father's name is George. Oh. Well, George lived here in, uh, on, Stage on Road. Cummins Road. Stage Road, Cummins Road. Yeah. Hmm. And, uh, he built the house. He on lived on Stage Road, Road, Road once. But they all died so quick. I don't know they all. The Steinbrenners. Where, where did you grow up, May? Right here. Oh, here? Over here. Across the road? Over there. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, where I always lived. Yeah. Now, what's your connection with Arthur Bird? Oh, he was... My father's brother was his father. His father. George. Was my uncle, yeah. George and Levant and Edna and Arthur. Yeah. Your father was John Bird. John. And Arthur's father was George yeah. Bird. And they were brothers. Yeah. And Henry was uh, lived the first house from uh, Grant Club East. That first house on the north side of the road. House, they they covered it up, but yeah, I don't they know. They built a house around it, you remember? It wasn't until they throw the house out next to the They built a house That's around the house, and then when they got done, they couldn't get it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a funny situation, and I guess it mm. just overgrew. With so there were three brothers we're talking. Yeah, and two sisters, two girls, Minnie and Sarah. Do you remember the first automobiles that came yes, there? Yes, I do. Up in here? I well remember. Dr. Gippo had the very first car around that I saw. And we used to go to school. We walked. And uh, he come along one night, one afternoon. We was coming home from school, and he brought us home. 
he stopped and he says, yeah, we know the kids, you know. And uh, he kind of brought them all into this world. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought so much of that automobile ride. <laughs> but I was scared. If I was walking on the road, I would crawl a fence. Ah. So I wouldn't have to meet them, because them things, oh, they didn't <laughs> stop. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And, My, uh, there was uh, a Dr. Eckerson over in Shelby that had the first car over in Shelby. Uh-huh. He had well, it brought in on the railroad, but he didn't know how to drive it, so he hired a farmer to take a team of horses down <laughs> the station and Pull the car back to Shelby. <laughs> then he got in practice to uh -huh. sell. Red Eckers. Uh -huh. Do you remember any bad fires that happened when you were up and lived up in this country? <laughs> bad fires. Maybe there weren't any bad fires. Well, Eckers store back in thirty something. You remember any bad? Oh yeah, next door. You remember Fix's fire when you were a little girl? Oh, I learned in nineteen eight. Yeah, one Sunday morning. I was in the front room all alone, and my mother was working, doing up the Sunday morning work. We was planning on going to church somewhere, and my father took a gun and went back crow shooting. <laughs> he had a, crow, a few crows, hmm. and I had my dolls in there, you know, and I'd cry for the dolls, and I. My mother kept, and I would cry, and my mother, she'd come to the door several times. She says, I wish you'd stop that noise. And it wasn't me. It was Mrs. Fix crying and howling because things had gotten where she couldn't handle it. Uh -huh. And they had a couple of young kids, and they got to playing around the straw stack. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, my father was back there in Greeks Woods, it was Greeks at that time, and he saw the fire, he said, when he could have got it. It wasn't only that high, and he said he ran, but he couldn't make it. It got the best of him. Mm. The fire was in the straw stack. Did it burn more than the it straw stack? It burned stack? everything. Oh, no. She was in, and uh, Howard was only eight months old. He wasn't even a year old yet, and uh, she uh, came out and she cried and cried and cried and and she, that's all she could do. She had to stay with the baby. The rest of the family was all in church. Oh dear, Sandridge. They went to church, and uh, they come out of church and they said the smoke was so thick even over to Sandridge. All the way home, they wondered where the fire was. It does so much smoke, mm. and uh, it was their place. Mm. And people came on bicycles. Oh, there was a lot of men around here, and they came on bicycles and horses, and they tied a horse to every fence post. <laughs> and they couldn't do that now because there ain't no fence posts no more. <laughs> and. Uh, did you say they had carpets and wet down the roof? Yeah, they had to take, yeah, my mother had a lot of old red carpets, and uh, they soaked them up, and they had me pumping the water. I was only eight years old, but that one pump that was kind of an easy one that worked, and I was pumping water for all work, and uh, it was running into the cattle uh, trough. <laughs> And they'd dip into there, you know, and get a pail of water, and up the roof they'd go. Mm. And they soaked our roofs to the house. And then everywhere in the field and all over, you'd see a little fire start up. And there's a wind came up, you know. Yeah. And uh, it came from the south, right? In the mm. way. And that was an awful fire. An awful I fire. have a picture of a... Team of horses pulling a dump wagon that belonged to Cold Spring Construction. And yeah. George the man Fix. was driving it was a fix. It was George Fix. George yeah, Fix. Hired out. So they yeah. got five dollars a day for drawing stone on the road. Yeah, they this were building road was built South Newstead, I think. Yeah, this road. Yeah. Yeah. It was in 
the fire was in 1908, but they made the road in 1912. Mm -hmm. In 1911, they made the sluices, they fixed all the streams of water, mm -hmm. and in 12, they went and really, they really, and it was all built with horse labor. Horse labor, oh yeah. It wasn't a truck on the road. Mm -hmm. And the steam engine, you know, the steam roller, yeah. was on stage around that. And uh, we had work all the time. Is your whistle getting a little dry? Oh, yeah. That's kind of grapefruit and something, I don't know. Uh -huh. Oh, thank you. Juice is my favorite music. I don't know if I have your age right. I made an introduction on this tape, May, and I thought you were 96. I'm 97 now. And oh. If I live till May 15th, I'd be 98. No kidding. I was low on the number. <laughs> I think I put it on the introduction, which I made it at home before it came up. Uh -huh. Oh, my. I'm a May baby, too, May. Uh, I'm a May baby, too. Oh, what is it? 19. Oh, you're, so just, you're, you're, just four day, day, yeah. you're just four days older than I am. Yeah. Oh, you was born same year, 1900. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh nice. <laughs> now I know I got somebody. I know I got another, a Byers girl, and she was my same age. Oh, she's ten. I'm ten years older than she is. But uh, she's on May 15th, too. Did you get, when you were a youngster, did you get down to Akron very much? No, not very much. Not much, huh? <laughs> I was on the wagon when it went. Yeah. <laughs> I'll bet you. Well, it must have taken quite a part of a day to get down to the village and back. Well, it, did, it was. The horses, my dad wouldn't run them too much because they were only. Now, you told me that when. Swarms moved up here. Grandpa helped drive, drive the cows. cows up. Did they do that in one day or what? I don't know. They had. Uh, they lived down in Karen Center. Adam Swarm. Swarm did. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, somewhere around Karen Center. Swarmsville, like, wasn't and, it? Uh, and he'd come up here on the farm that his father owned. His, Is uh, that old, the one over? Old George Bob Swarm. And Bob Cecil. Is it Bob, Bob Cecil's Cecil. yeah. farm? Yeah. Fred, Fred Swarm owned the, uh, uh, the uh, old George Swarm owned the whole business. He owned the farm down on Buckley Road, and uh, and old George Swarm and Mrs. Swarm were running the store, and Fred and Kate they took the four of them, but they uh, they had a tavern too, and uh, old George Swarm had a long white beard. A picture of him somewhere. May was uh, Bob Cecil's mother a swarm? Yeah. Is that the way it goes? Yeah, Florence was. A, mm -hmm. She was Adam Swarm's daughter. They was uh, three children: Walter, she and and Bertha and Bertha Swarm. Bertha died. Another Walter. Bertha died. Walter. And, uh, Mildred and uh, Mildred and Walter and Florence were the only survivors. And Walter was your school teacher. Yeah. When the Titanic went down, he was my teacher. He was a good teacher too. And he used to go walk home at noon to eat his dinner. And then he taught school and he walked went home for dinner, and he brought his newspaper back. And I thought, oh, what's he bringing that newspaper for? The mailman delivered them right at noon, I guess, then. And uh, he brought the newspaper, and he read the whole account and told us all about the Titanic. Did that make an impression on me? Oh, yeah, I just oh, thought my. that was an awful, awful thing. Yeah, I guess. goodness. Bob Cecil the other day gave me a nice picture, about eight by ten inch picture of the old hotel that was down on the corner here. I got a picture of it 
too. Do you? Yeah. I had the. Uh, mine took is a, a smaller one. Yeah. But I value that because I thought a lot of that building. That was a big building. It was a beautiful building. They had dance floor yeah. upstairs and the cupola up above there. Uh, yeah. And there was a dance floor up there. And uh, they had a big square piano up there. The first time I go into Akron, I had to go up there to use the bus. And I can remember we run around on the. Well, it was a porch all around the thing. All I remember is just David's store, which is recent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's all I remember of it. I when never got up here. The bus would take us to the fair. Yeah. They always stopped there to pick us up at Victor's. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, when they, when they built it up, they didn't uh, make it as quite as nice as it was no. the first time. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> no, nowhere near as big. No. Bob Cecil remembers helping to put the posts underneath the floor so the dance floor wouldn't yeah. fall down. They had a bolstering up there. I remember that they always did that yeah. uh, when they was getting a crowd up there. Yeah, right. They'd uh, bolster it all up. <laughs> <laughs> you used to help sometimes up there, didn't you, when they had... Yes, when Mrs. Uh, Eckner was there, then I helped her once. When she had a big dinner. <laughs> I don't know who. What was it, was. it a restaurant too? Just a Every hotel, hotel saloon, you know. Saloon. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't so know he was from food, apparently. Well, what was that? A special party that she had? Yeah, Ida. I would have uh, Mr. Uh, Eckner's daughter. She'd get, get it up, you know, and she'd help. Ida would. And Carl, too. Carl. That was Carl Eckner was Mr. Eckner's son. And, uh, I remember Eckner's store before David's. Eckner's, Eckner's run a, a nice store. Yeah, yeah. They did. Okay. Um, <laughs> it was everything in that store. Okay. From yard goods to schools to yeah. coffee grinder. They had the whole bit. Yeah, yeah that big coffee grinder. Cookies <laughs> in the box, you know, <laughs> where you pull them out. Yeah. <laughs> You remember the first telephones that yep, came I up remember. this way? I, I was just trying to think to the when did the telephone come? It wasn't here when the road was, but we didn't have it anyway. But we soon shortly did. Around 1915, we had the telephone. But the, the electric, well, we had gas. My grandfather, Irving Eckerson, was belonged in the telephone company that started in Akron, I guess. And the story I got is that he was sitting at the switchboard, running it, I guess, one day for lack of another switchboard operator. And lightning hit the building and knocked him off the chair. <laughs> Came through yeah. the switchboard. Wasn't the telephone office upstairs with it was up over the top of the uh, building. Was where the National post Bank. office? Is that where it was? I can remember going upstairs to pay the bill. Oh yeah, and Jenny Wagner. Jenny Wagner. She was when yeah. we were kids. She right. was a switchboard operator. Yeah. Mabel Perry, Mabel Blackmore was a switchboard mm -hmm. operator that somewhere there. Too. Oh, was she in Akron? I didn't know that. And Bertha Fix. Oh. Bertha Fix down here. She was Bertha Dunn. Roy Dunsley, and he worked in the telephone office, too. Oh. My goodness. Well, you, being mature as you are, you should have great words of wisdom for the younger people around, do you? Yeah. You said we How got gas in 1912. Yeah. And okay. we had lights and telephone came in 1915. Yeah, I know we had it in 15. That's what you yeah. told me once, and I wrote it down. <laughs> That was the time to do it because I've forgotten so many things. Oh heavens! I know I forget. You have a lot to forget. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. My goodness! You told it was, me it was really something when you stop and think of it. This you, time you told me about the industry around here. I asked her about that. You said Charles Side paid in wagons. 
You told me Charles Seib, S-E-I-B, painted wagons. He was a wagon painter. You forgot oh, that? Oh, Charlie Cecil. You said Seib. She, you must have, oh, she no. must have given me I the wrong. I couldn't. She must Charlie have given Charlie me the wrong answer. I'm questioning her why you get the right one, huh? He had what, there's a, there's a garage down here in Dix's yard, and they moved it down there. He had it up there by uh, uh, well, Who was Charles Seib? Has he got anything to do with anything, or don't you know him? Huh? <laughs> who was Charles Seib? Has he got anything to do with Yeah, it? He, he lived where Feldman's, too. Charlie Seib. That was the Seib. That was Aunt Mary Seib that lived there. Oh, she was Aunt Mary to the uh, Smiths and all. She um, could brought up Paul Lair. She brought Didn't up Paul Lair, yeah. Jeanette Smith died when he was born. Then you said Johnny Sheehan was a blacksmith. <laughs> and he ran away with Mabel Rodemeyer yeah. on Christmas vacation. Mabel yeah, Rodemeyer Mabel was, was born in the sides. <laughs> what this good gossip? <laughs> Sheehan, Sheehan was a blacksmith in the blacksmith shop. And they both boarded there. And, uh, they boarded Mabel at Sides? The teacher. They boarded at Sides? Yep. Oh, okay. They boarded there, and come Christmas vacation, and we all got the measles. The whole school come down with the measles. <laughs> <laughs> and the doctor was running, come every day for 12 days, I think. Dr. Gippo did. No, they don't come. <laughs> where, where was the Some black? Some was so awful sick. The nice oh, yeah. boys were awful sick. Hmm. With measles. That might be something for you to search out. The blacksmith shop, was that Fix's garage? No, that was Charlie uh, Cecil's paint shop. Oh, that's got paintings on the wall, they yeah. tell me. Yes, you did. Yeah. Where? Looking pretty good, um, I tell you. It's right next door. Is that didn't burn? No. And it wasn't moved there yet, then. That could be. Could it was moved there. Moved from right. It was down here, I remember, when they moved it. Texas brought it and they moved okay, it Okay, but it here. was moved after the fire. After the fire, oh, yeah. But you say there is a building there with paintings on the walls? That's what oh, I heard. I don't know. Wagon paintings. He, wagon painting. he did. Well, yeah. who owns the building now? Texas. Lyle Fitt. Lyle, I wonder. Fitt, or not it, Howard, but it's behind his father's house that his father lived in. Gosh, you know what? But Kenny Fitz the... lives in the house. Yeah. I, I, that's oh, interesting. Yeah. If there are pictures there, I wish I could get inside and photograph them and take pictures I of them. I got some Charlie's. I had, I had some of Charlie Cecil's paintings. He had a lot of paintings. What's Arlene don't seem to know anything about them. I wonder them. where What's they are. What's that relationship? Charlie the, Cecil. Arlene. Charlie Cecil uh -oh. was John's brother. John's, John's brother. It was Fred and Charlie and John. Uh, hmm. uh, He's no longer living. Maybe. Well, he There's married a girl. Him. She married Will Grazer. Uh, you mean the Mamie Cecil. That was John Cecil's sister. Uh-huh. Oh, Arlene's father. Yeah. yeah. But this Charlie Cecil, he got married to a... Brother Rubley. Yeah. And Fred Cecil, I don't know who he married, but he did marry. Well, somebody. they're all dead, though. Oh, yes. Maybe too. What your dad was he related to Ralph Altro? His brother. A brother. Okay. Well, I remember Ralph. What what this person doing? Yeah. Ralph. Did he die in an accident? My father. No, he died in the hospital at a heart. Ralph Altro married one of Louis Belger's girls. Yeah, Gertie Belger. Yeah. He built the town. Oh, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm very interested in that name. I, I helped kill Louis Belger. You did? Yeah, the first year I was on the earth, my mother and dad had a room at Irving Eckerson's on Buffalo Street, on the second floor, and on hot spring summer nights, I'd cry all night, and Louis was in the alley in his bedroom across where he lived, dying. He was very sick, and my mother said, 
when I cry at night, he would swear at me in German across the alley. So I always like to say I helped kill him. That's not very nice, though. Did you tell it? Uh, Ralph used to have to carry him around in the back end of a truck. He was so big. Yeah, he, was, he sat in the back and, and uh, let the end gate down on right. the pickup truck. That's how they carried him around. Go yeah, on the job. Always. The uh, yeah. Elder was a builder, you know. And, oh, I know. He built the Hawkins schoolhouse. Oh, so he, yeah. I found he that out. All your houses up in the Heights. Oh, yeah. He built Beverly Heights. Where you are. Yeah, oh yeah. They call that Delger Heights. Delger Heights know. still is. I'm told that he got all the lumber for those when they tore the Pan American down in <laughs> Buffalo in 1901. Oh, he bought a he bought a railroad he car to use lumber. used lumber and he built all the houses on Delger Heights. They're all you get down my cellar. It's all used lumber. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's what I've heard. That he, where he got the wood. Well, I was to that thing too, but I don't remember it. I was just a baby and it took me. Mm -hmm. In 1901. And I was born in 1900. I guess they had to carry me around. They had you in the buggy. Yeah, they would. had that big buggy with the high wheels on the back and the low ones on the front. And the yeah, but they didn't take them. Around. I got old enough to go. I went with them. May, do you have brothers and sisters? I had a brother, but he died uh, a couple of years ago. He was 80. Oh, he grew. He died in 19. Yeah. He was born in 1911. Oh, he's a lot younger. Yeah, it was 11 years. Lucille, you've done a lot of homework on this, so you got. No, I I did this when she was in the nursing home. Oh. And I didn't know what to do with it, so I talked with her about old stuff, and I. Got this book, but it got too big to carry around, and I carried a, a smaller thing around. Yeah. And I haven't copied all the sheets in yet, see. Okay. So, but that's good that you did that. But I thought, well, you know, let's do something. <laughs> yeah, sometimes sure. it seems real fresh in my mind. I can tell the names of people and all, but well, she I was real lucid them. at that time, you know, and she told me all this junk, but we got the wrong Charlie Cecil painted wagons. You see, you told me Charlie Sides. My, my mother was a Bukri, <laughs> and she was one of seven sisters Who? and two brothers. May's my mother. mother. She was one of was seven girls and two brothers. Now, oh. is George oh. Bukley one of her brothers? Yeah, George and Fred were her brothers. I remember and one Mary friend. Hyman and Barbara Bukley, Barbara Palmer. And Mag Jensen, and Annie yeah, Hoy, and Libby Miller. Oh, yeah, that's the Miller connection. Uh-huh. Mm. And Mary, Mary Hyman, yeah. Was that, uh, that George Bukley was Esther's grandfather. Yeah. Esther Perry's yeah. grandfather. Yeah. 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 And there was a brother Fred there, too? Because that's your dad. Don't you know Fred Bookley? Well, Fred was. Oh, the old Fred down in the main Why, road? Why, sure. That's old car. Fred's old. Him well. No, Fred's no, old. no. You've got Esther's dad. The other Fred what Bukley. What was Esther's? He, had, he was George's son. There was what, was, what was dad. Esther's father's Fred. first name? Fred. That's what we're talking about. He was about. named no, after an another Fred down on the main road that I knew. Oh. Fred and Susan. Okay, two and friends. He didn't have children. And they no had children. no children. No, no. Okay. But I worked for Jenny when uh, when Jeanette was Jeanette born. Jeanette was born, right? And uh, uh, Esther, I can remember Esther. She was she could talk, and she oh she didn't want me to help her in, in getting her dressed. You know, I can button my pants myself. She'd say. <laughs> She had a um, sack on her throat here. Uh, they called it a blood tumor. Mm. And when she was about 
seven months old, maybe. They operated on that and took that all off, and it come out fine. Wonderful. Mm. Mm. And uh, Wendy's had a, a girl born that had an awful birthmark on her face. And uh, they spent loads of money on that. Mm. But they got it off. Who was that? Wendy. She used to work for Libby and, and uh, Jim Wendy on stage road. Oh, yeah. And several of their children. What other facets of South Oostead can we ask about? Well, they have fire fixes and then the fire of swarms. That was a lot later. And you might ask her about that creamery. Oh, the creamery, that's made into yeah, a house. She came in yeah. stuff on that before here. And that was on what, the Fred Nervous place? Fred and Charlie Fisher. Fisher. But they run it. Bill Anchorlate was the first butter maker there. He boarded to Reed's. And uh, I don't know, he. They said he made shingles too, or, or something. Something they said he had a, a, he used to work down in the woods a lot, and, uh, making shingles. I don't know what, what it was, what kind of shingles. Oh, they used to have them uneven shingles. They, they, well, were, they were wood made. shingles of some kind, but it was mm -hmm. a kind of a little. He had a shop in the woods. Uh-huh, shop in the woods. They used the to call them bush, cedar maybe. shakes, and they weren't, bush, maybe, they weren't they uniform, were just, and there's. So when you've got them on a roof, they they wave. all wavy and... They used to have a sugar shape. bush hole in that woods back of Fred's house. Back of where that new house is now. Back that in there. That castle? The South Newstead Castle? <laughs> uh, yeah, the South Newstead Castle. Uh, it was a, a, it's, uh, it's a beautiful house back you there. You can just see the outline of it through the trees here. It's white looking. Back in when you go up past Dorfville, you can see it from here. You can see that house. Yeah, you just make it out, but pretty soon when the leaves are all out, you won't see that. Yeah, um, I can almost see traffic on the throughway with it. after ride is over. My goodness. Well, we appreciate your reminiscing here because. Uh, you're one of the experts, you know. There aren't many experts. Hey, many my age. <laughs> well, that's right. They would know what things were like here. Me? Tell me about... What's this? Didn't Aunt Margaret used to talk about an Aunt Mary Scheib? Scheib. Oh, Scheib. Aunt Mary Scheib? Yeah. We all called her Aunt Mary Scheib. She was such a wonderful person. And when Jeanette died, she, stood, she was there. And... Uh, she uh, she took Paul over and she w took him in bed with her and she brought him right up and he was about three years old I guess she stayed right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was she a family connection to Aunt Margaret? Yeah. She was a widow then, you know, and she had no place to go, I guess, and she stayed. What there, relation but... was she to Margaret Blackmore? And her, what relation was she to Margaret Blackmore? I don't know who she was. Oh, that's a, she almost mentioned her as Aunt yeah. Mary Shelley. <laughs> well, now maybe she, yeah. she used to live to, to John Fisher. I was going to say Fisher's. Uh, she, she was related to the Fisher's up on Main Road, them Fisher's. And uh, were, she uh, stayed, she she stayed and I, with Johnny Mike Fishers and uh, where Jean and I had the their property next mm -hmm. there somewhere. Mm -hmm. I think so. That is, two so three stayed there. Fred, uh, let's see. It was a Myers. A Myers always stayed there. One of uh, Fred Myers' brothers. See, when these old Myers is died and they left two, three children. They had a girl and, and two boys, and they stayed to Johnny Mike Fisher. We always called him Johnny Mike. Yeah, always. Uh -huh. 
and Libby Fisher. Mm -hmm. She was a sister to Mrs. Gipple. There you go. And Mrs. Mrs. Gipple. Now you're getting the. the well, Mrs. Gipple. She was a sister to Ed Long. Yes, she yeah. was. There Mrs. you go. Catherine Gipple was a, was a Catherine Long. There you go. Yeah. Doctor Doctor Gipple's wife was along. Yeah. Oh, his wife. Uh, yeah. Doctor Gipple's wife was along. The old doctor. The, the old doctor. Oh, well, the old doctor, not not Warren. I doctor. never knew his name. No, oh, she was a Southern girl. Yeah. They had them too. <laughs> well, doctor Aunt Margaret always spoke so highly I got the of receipt Dr. for Gipple. when I was born. Twenty-five dollars. Doctor Gipple brought me. Oh, <laughs> Uh, South Newstead Road holds lots of fond memories for me. Is where I smashed my father's car up one night really? in 1937. Oh. oh, I had to. I figured I had to go to Lancaster to a basketball game, and it was snowing like mad, and the snowbanks were halfway up to the telephone wires. <laughs> and I plowed I right into the back the of a snowplow truck. They'd open the fences and go right through the fields. Yeah. And they wouldn't open up, up the roads until after April. Really? So they, oh. they didn't get them filled up yet by Easter time. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. We had lots of care then, huh? <laughs> well, that was Some a... days I think it's like that again. <laughs> when we had them old snow banks, snow banks in on the road, and it was invariably an awful high. Mm -hmm. I got some pictures of them. Mm. You, you uh, have all your pictures that she's mentioning in filed and in books and the right way. All over the house. I oh. got them, but I ain't got them in shape. She gets to playing in them every little while, and she's got mine and hers and everybody's. I, I don't know where anything is. <laughs> when you mentioned the paintings mm -hmm. in this garage, they weren't painted on the walls, were they? I think so. That's That's... Gee, if you could find out something about that for me, I'd like to... What was that? The paintings that were in I'll the barn the up here. Oh, the paintings. Charlie like says to me. I'd like to... He was... Well, I wonder where all of them went. I had some big ones upstairs, and I... Did oh, they yeah, get yeah. sold? Huh? They must have got sold at auction. I don't know the where they are. Oh... I had one of cows. Yeah. He was good a painter. Was he? Yeah. Painted with what? Oil or? Oil. Sure, mm -hmm. oil. Mm -hmm. I'll be darned. There's a lot of these names you're mentioning I never even heard of. Because I lived in the village all my life. Yeah. I never knew anybody yeah. out here. In yeah, he was a good painter. He, he had a lot of paintings and he used to work over the hillers a lot. And Tiny Heller, I don't know if you ever oh, knew Tiny. Tiny. Tiny Heller, did yes, you know? Yes, I sure did. Well, she got most of the nice paintings that he had. Cause oh. She had him painting all the time, I guess. Oh, yeah? Who did? Tiny Heller. Yeah, this is where this comes from. That's what he did. When you have that little life under it, you know, Oh, yeah. It really has a lot of highlight to it. Sure. Oh, you got that one, yeah. Well, that's what this man painted. That was Aunt Velma's. No, oh. this was Elwood's mother's. Yeah. Oh. That's what he did. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was a, a hired man for Hillers, wasn't he? He's Charlie Cecil. Yeah. Yeah, and see, my mother-in-law... Was Tiny a, Hiller. Was a, Tiny Hiller was her. Hiller was her sister. <laughs> grandparents. Oh. oh. Tiny Hiller was his. Was and that's how Aunt Velma and Elwood's mother got her these pictures. Well, and your so, husband's. Yeah, he was. Uh, and uh, his mother was a Johnson. She grew up back here. Oh, her okay. mother was a Hiller. Okay. And she was a sister of uh, Mrs. Knight and Carrie Knight. Yeah. And and Tiny uh, Hiller. Tiny Hiller. And a John Hiller. And Zuberk in Lancaster. Yeah. Hmm. They was all. all I, I've got some of the old uh, stuff on the family. 
And then this one uh, family the, from the Johnsons, there was a Dorsch, a stage, a healer, and I said, but it's all our roads up there. Yeah. And it yeah. was nice. It was so interesting to Sure. Well, they're all roads. Well, now stage road, there was a Mary Moon. Now, who was Mary Moon? Was she Mary Stage? Yes, Mary Moon Stage. It was Aunt Margaret's grandmother. Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure that's right. Mary Moon yeah, Stage. Yeah, I think so. I think she was Frank Stage's mother. Was she? Frank Stage. I can't tell you that for sure. Frank Stage was a, a politician in Newstead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I went uh, sure. I went into the barn where Frank Stage grew up uh, on that farm and on one of the beams in the top of the barn, <laughs> he carved his name, Frank uh -huh. M. Stage. So yeah. My brother put his name all over the barns <laughs> over there. Oh, yeah. Frank Stage had a express office, an insurance agency, right where the bank now sits. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And a little awning over the front. And that yeah. is, that it wasn't a very big building. building. No. no. Small I building. remember Margaret George said she had dolls in the window. Uh. Up there. <laughs> I'd get down to Aunt Sarah's house and she'd take me by the hand and take me down to see those dolls. I was thinking, you know, of the Stricklands. Uh, George Strickland. Did you know George Strickland? I knew just a girl in our class, Frances Strickland. No, 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 no. Well, he no, was I don't my know. aunt Em's the only one brother. I know. Oh. He was M. Berg's brother. Okay. And uh, his mother, I remember his mother. She was quite an old lady, and she was his housekeeper, and she died. And she brought up Jenny. You know, Higgins. Jenny Higgins? Mm, Jenny. Uh, yeah, I know the name. Well, Jenny, yeah. uh, Jenny's mother died when she was... Quite a young girl. Well, you're yeah. getting into the Paxons there now, too, aren't you? Huh? Aren't the Paxons in that? Yeah, oh. Ruby Paxson was, uh, and Briny Paxson. And they used to come up to Jenny's a lot. And I, uh, she'd, let's see, she'd ride up. How did she get up there? And she, when Arthur Byrne would come home for dinner, He'd forget Brandy Paxson. Brandy Paxson would be to Jenny's. And and then she'd tell him to stop and pick up at Brandy. And uh, he'd get down there. <laughs> he'd forget it. <laughs> I'd forget it. He'd have to yeah, we'll come back and get Brandy Paxson. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. I think I was after Briny. <laughs> well, Briny was quite a... She used to come up and help Jenny out. I quite figured out in my mind. I don't know what was. relation she was to Jenny. But she was some relation to Jenny Higgins. This, this South Newstead comes out on what we used to call Swartz's Corner. Yeah. yeah. Tuttle's. Right Tuttle. up here on Main, Main Road. Yeah, that was Tuttle's Corners. Oh, it was Tuttle. Where Tuttle's. did Tuttle live? Do you remember? Huh? You know where old man Tuttle lived? No. Oh, I wonder. Well, there was some. Uncle George's house was Bar... Not Barnum's farm. Was it Barnum's? You can't. It began with a B. Now I can't think of this Barnum's. Here comes the high school chorus director. Yeah. <laughs> she wonders who the devil is. She's looking at the car. She doesn't know who it is. We went to the... What time you meeting? So oh, whenever she gets it made. <laughs> no rush. Well, I appreciate your talking with us. Gosh. <laughs> I'm enjoying I'm, I'm, every minute of it. I'm, I'm of it. <laughs> trying to uh, record as many people's recollections as I can. People that, because I'm only 76, I don't remember much of this stuff. No. I'm sad. <laughs>
No, I'm only 76. And we got six, you know, seven new houses down here. I know it. I don't know what of them yet. Really? No, no kidding. No. Yeah. I looked at the uh, football uh, through. I thought maybe that the... Uh, you just drove down here. I'm sure they'd like to look in there and see if there's some paintings. But I heard there were, but I don't know. I'd like to know. I'd like to photograph. How well do you know? Hello, Hi, Candy. Hi, Stanley. How are you? Good. 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 How are you, Granny? Yeah. What are you talking? <laughs> you're, you're, you're famous now, Candy. You're on tape. <laughs> <laughs> we enjoyed your musical the other day. Did you get out of range? Out of range, <laughs> yep. Well, maybe we should go if these folks are going to contemplate. Well, you stay as long as you want to. We is, that, is that a Fix's milk truck going by? Yeah. It must be. Yeah, it just went by. I'll call Betty to see what she knows about oh, it. About the paintings? Yeah. Oh, would you? Yeah. That'd be great. Hey, John. This is Sign. See, Cecil, 1915, and really, that's very good. Let me look at one minute. Well, I just wonder where mine were. I think I you had two or three. I turned in a picture of that is uh, the grandfather down here with that truck that said Cold Spring Construction on it. Oh, yeah. That was my picture. Was it? Yeah. Now, where did I get it? Did I get it from you? It, no. I, I gave it to Dottie Rutledge, see. I think Dottie let me take yeah. the two pictures. Yeah. There's one also of the, the creamery. The creamery with yeah. the float and the two yeah. cows pulling the. Looks oh, like you gave those? Yeah. You want to? Are you supposed to have them back? No, she's got them. She said. They, she's they got to give them back to you. Yeah, she might break it. But uh, when Joanne Fix was down here shortly after I did that, and I told her about it, and she was really interested. Well, she says, I don't know, did they print it? Are they going to print them? I don't know what they're going to put in the book yet. I've been on the well, committee, I but I, I... I didn't know if it would... Yeah. I just told her that I... I took the picture of her. Yeah, I took the negatives. They were little 35 millimeter negatives. Mm -hmm. And I had three or four pictures of each of them made for myself, for the Historical Society, and maybe to put in the book. We'll see whether they do or not. I'll give Betty a ring. Okay. you know any of Wendy's? No, just that Wendy is... What? Wendy made... owns a house that's a century Tom. house. Tom. Tom Wendy? No, Jim. 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 Jim Wendy. Jim? Oh, Otto Wendy. I'm no, not sure. I don't know, man. Otto Wendy was in the yeah. railroad no, office. Wendy. Oh, okay. And I got a picture of him with the, with the people. Oh. Well, that's where the name Wendy came from for the village or the settlement, Wendy, from that family. Oh, yeah. I suppose. So many. Well, there was two families of Wendy's. Oh. And two old men came from Germany, and they were brothers. Mm -hmm. And one was William, and one was Herman. And Herman was the one that I'm more interested in. Yeah. And uh, William was the one that the, or the poorhouse was uh, interested in. Right? Oh. The, the county home or? County home, yeah. that's what I want to think. Yeah. yeah. They had the Wendy farm. Oh. And that was the other Wendy. That was the William Wendy. I see. And uh, the I Herman never... Wendy, he had nine sons. And it was all doctors. Really? That's interesting. Isn't yes, that? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, T.J. over here on on uh, Stage Road, he made a book, and uh, it'd be interesting, I bet you, to, to you to read it to sure. see what a famous family they were. Yeah, I never knew the Wendy's were. Well, he made a family this of book. doctors. He made it up and he gave it to me. Because I worked there a lot, you know, and, mm -hmm. and my aunt was uh, was Minnie Wendy's good friend, and uh, Aunt Sarah and Aunt Minnie both. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm. they had nine boys and one girl. One boy drowned. He was coming over Andrew. 
he was coming over to South Newstead to visit the school. Mm -hmm. Him and three other boys. One was a butlinger, and one was Wendy. And there's another one, and I can't think of his last name. Old timer, butlinger. There ain't mm. none of them around. No, I never heard of it. No. <laughs> and um, they, they was crossing the creek. It was in the winter, and they was crossing the Millbrook Creek, and he drowned it. He oh. got under the ice, and they couldn't help him. Oh, and they very, they regretted that awful. My, the Wendy's felt awful bad about that. Oh, sure, sure. Oh, they have nine boys, you know, and one of them drowned. Mm. My goodness. Let's see what else I can think of. I've run out of questions, May. Would you believe that? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Maybe you can think of some things just to say. Oh. I don't know. Sometimes I can't think. <laughs> if I could see better, I could think better. I suppose so. <laughs> sure. Sure. I've seen a copy of that picture somewhere. Or an original of that oh. scene with the Indians sitting on the on well, the rock. I think yeah. anybody might have painted anybody who painted Indians might paint one something like it. Well, they might have, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Where did you go to church when you were a kid? Millgrove. In Millgrove. Yeah, but I was uh, uh, baptized in this church up here. Because my folks wanted to have me baptized in church, I guess, and, oh. and they uh, went up here after church. Yeah. It was over one Sunday and had me baptized. Where was the church up here? I was um, Lutheran. Um, oh, all right. Okay. I was um, Lutheran back then. My father I was so brought up in the Millgrove Church. I was evangelical. Lutheran, and uh, my mother was up here, mm -hmm. and my mother played the organ, and um, oh, Bartell was minister. Mm -hmm. You remember Bartell? No, gosh, I don't. No. And, uh, <laughs> no. He was strict as a dickens. Oh, know, yeah? Some of the Lutherans are going to be versus the Catholics. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, oh, that's going in print now, May, you know. <laughs> oh, bless and, your heart. Uh, <laughs> You're saying it like it is again. I always wanted it. My mother <coughs> was quite faithful to her church. Uh -huh. she, had been, she had been the organist for a long time before oh, yeah? she was married. And uh, my dad, she says he always chewed about everything in the in the church, and, and he didn't like he didn't like Bartell. He didn't fit with him at all. Mm. And uh, I don't know. Uh, he kept on until he he wasn't going there anymore in the church. He was born in Melville, or he mm. was confirmed. Yeah. Do you have any luck on the phone? No. Uh, just as I thought. Place is so full of crap and corruption they can't get to the where the pictures are. Oh, but he really? says there is some kind of stuff on the wall, but it ain't in very good shape. So if you want to write him <laughs> to unhook some of the stuff, you know, I can imagine everything is hanging. Oh yeah. That would be interesting. Yeah, but you can't read it. Well, well, uh, see, you know, I mean, you can't take it down. I want to take a picture. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, just, just, uh, just to know it's there. Just to peek through and see what shows. <laughs> I tried. Somebody told me that, not uh, let's see, Steiner, Stanley, Sherwood told Kate me Sherwood. that Kate Sherwood, Steiner? Sherwood, Sherwood told me that in the in the church that used to be the Reformed Church. A lot of the people had written their names on the plaster walls, and I went up to try to find it, but I couldn't <laughs> find the names of the mm -hmm. people that were in the church. But that fascinated me. Wilbur's 
Wilbur moved the church, I guess. Bought it and moved it up the road to his farm. And you know where Wilbur. Harry Finch's house is. Well, where is that? Where, was uh, the homestead of the Boothley clan, her mother. Oh. That's where they grew up. And uh, Rosella oh, Finch. Oh, where Harry Finch lived. That was where my mother grew up. Yeah. yeah. I used yeah. to run into Rosella. And she says the stairway up to the attic, the, the treads, was all wore down like it had millions of feet on it. Oh, yeah. Up to the attic. Well, there must have been soft wood, too, because that's sure, sure. Family. Wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. Family. Yeah, well, now, within the last two or three years, we've heard from this bunch of Brooklyn from oh, the West, yeah. and they stayed here with this one and brought their, we had sons, seven sons, I guess, <laughs> and uh, her mother's family with the seven daughters and two sons. That many kids and two parents for each, running up and down and sleeping. Probably well, one of them was. Grandfather Buchley's uh, brother came from Germany after he had a family. He mm. had six children mm. and a wife, and he landed in Crittenden. And uh, they all stayed there. And that house is a little house. I don't know how they ever put them. <laughs> and uh, and they stayed there till school began, and they had to look for a school. They had a they had friends in Dakota. They went west. Then. Oh yeah. And they was uh, they was going to go to Dakota. So uh, come time when the kids had to get to school, you know. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, my grandmother. I guess she <laughs> she was glad they were going. <laughs> <laughs> Six kids coming in, you know, from yeah. Germany. That, that was an awful bunch. Uh, but they remembered quite a bit. And uh, when okay. my mother died, why well, she had been corresponding with a, a Chris from uh, Dakota. Mm -hmm. So I thought I would write to Chris Bukley and tell him that yeah. she died. So I did, but I never heard from him. Oh. And so I told them about it, mm -hmm. that I had wrote to Chris Bookley, and I had his picture and everything. Well, didn't they say he died suddenly or something? Huh? Didn't they say he died and suddenly? He died. Yeah. He got kicked by a horse. Mm -hmm. He said he, he was a uh, doing something with his horse, and the horse kicked him. Mm 